When we're talking about lung infections, we define the infection by the site. So that means that if you have an infection of the pharynx or the nose or the larynx, that's called an upper respiratory tract infection. And that's usually the common cold or viral infection that we've all had repeatedly in our lives. There are the occasional rarer diseases caused by bacteria, which we'll mention later, diphtheria, epiglottitis, for example. Then in the lower respiratory tract, you may get infections which only affect the trachea or the bronchial tree. Now, they tend to be that you will get an infection of the trachea and it will spread to the bronchi. They're not independent of each other. Usually you get a tracheobronchitis. And again, that's often a viral infection. And again, we've probably all had those several times in our lives. That's the acute infection of the bronchial tree. The chronic bronchial infection is largely a disease called bronchiectasis, and that's a subject of one of the talks on airways disease. The main subject of this lecture is pneumonia, and that is an infection that's affecting the alveoli, and it's an acute infection. There are a range of less acute infections of the alveoli, tuberculosis being the most common. Other things would be lung abscess and some very rare infections due to fungi and unusual bacteria. And those are mentioned and discussed in the talk on tuberculosis. So today we're really going to concentrate on acute pneumonia, alveolar infection, and it could be due to a virus or it could be due to bacteria. So pneumonia is incredibly common. It affects about one in 200 people each year. It's the fourth commonest cause of death in the USA and similar data for other countries in the industrialized world. And it is actually the commonest cause of death in children under the age of five across the developing world. As I've already mentioned, the pneumococcus, streptococcus pneumoniae, is the commonest cause. Before we discuss pneumonia, I'm just briefly going to cover upper respiratory tract infections. These are incredibly common. As I've mentioned, we all have had colds in our life and we'll get repeated colds as time goes by. These are mainly due to viruses, rhinovirus, adenovirus, various influenza viruses, metanumovirus, etc. And occasionally they can be due to a bacterium, the commonest being Streptococcus pyogenes, which causes the disease that everyone calls strep throat, and that's basically a bacterial infection of the pharynx. Patients with upper respiratory tract infections present similarly, depending and independent of what the pathogen is, with sneezing, a sore throat, cough, mild systemic upset, a bit of a fever, feeling unwell, wanting to go to bed. And the treatment actually is not much. We just leave this and people will get better most of the time. If you have a strep pyogenes pharyngitis, then actually antibiotics would be helpful and penicillin would be beneficial in those circumstances. There are a couple of bacterial infections of the upper respiratory tract which are very important because they are potentially dangerous. Diphtheria is a laryngitis, an infection of the larynx caused by a bacterium called Coronibacterium diphtheriae. The important thing about diphtheria is that the infection forms what we call a pseudomembrane. That's an extra layer of gunky tissue on the surface of, of the larynx. And that pseudomembrane causes obstruction of the larynx. And of course, the larynx is a relatively small surface area and is where all the air that goes into your lung has to pass through. And that causes airways obstruction and therefore is potentially dangerous, and which is why diphtheria used to be a very common cause of death in infants. Epiglottitis is a rare infection of the epiglottis, as its name suggests, and that's due to a bacteria called Haemophilus influenzae. And again, it causes swelling of the epiglottis and therefore causes upper airways obstruction and is potentially dangerous as a consequence of that. Fortunately, diphtheria can be vaccinated against and has become much less of a problem than it used to be in the past. So if you're talking about lower respiratory tract infections, those that occur below the larynx, affecting the trachea, the bronchi, or the alveoli, in fact, most patients with lower respiratory tract infection will have the tracheobronchitis that we mentioned. That's the bottom part of this pyramid of infection. And only a small portion of patients actually go on to develop the more serious form of lower respiratory tract infection, which is the pneumonia. And of those with pneumonia, say of about 100 people with pneumonia, about 70% can be treated successfully in the community. You don't need to get into hospital if you have pneumonia, because in most cases it's relatively mild. However, in some people, it's a more severe disease, and in some people, it's a very severe disease. And they end up in hospital, potentially in intensive care, and there is a mortality, which probably overall, for each 100 people with pneumonia, about three will die. You just completed your first video of the world's best medical exam preparation. 
Lecturio brings the knowledge of worldwide leading medical experts and teaching award winners to your PC, tablet, or smartphone. Prepare yourself and check your progress with thousands of quiz questions customized to US MLE standards. And the very best, you can get in touch with our medical experts personally. Visit Lecturio.com now and continue with the most inspiring medical education around the globe, anytime, anywhere.